Okay, our next slide is about gonzo journalist and literary roustabout Hunter S. Thompson. Thompson was born in Louisville, Kentucky, served in the Air Force, and worked as a journalist in Puerto Rico before moving to San Francisco, where an article about the Hells Angels turned into a book project. He spent almost two years riding with the outlaw motorcycle gang. In 1966, he published a bestseller that took readers deep inside a subculture largely inaccessible to the outside world. He lived and wrote on the edge in a style that would become called gonzo journalism. That term captures his lifestyle but it didn't really do justice to Thompson's command of language, his fearless reporting, or his fearsome intellect. 30 years writing for the Rolling Stone magazine, he idolized Ernest Hemingway. After a long bout with severe health issues, Thompson commits suicide. Jack Nicholson, John Kerry, and Johnny Depp gathered at Thompson's Colorado home where his ashes were shot out of a cannon under a full moon. Rolling Stone magazine was founded in San Francisco in 1967 by Jan Weiner, a former student at the University of California at Berkeley, and Ralph Gleason, a jazz critic for the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper. The first issue appeared on November 9, 1967, with John Lennon on the cover. The magazine's creators intended Rolling Stone to be a barometer of the artistic tastes, political sensibilities of the student generation. The magazine effectively combined passion and professionalism using both proper English and street language. As the magazine increasingly came to define significant trends in discerning taste in rock and pop music, appearances on its cover were coveted by established as well as up and coming musicians and albums of critical success. Along with the Beatles, Bob Dylan, Madonna, and many other musicians, Rolling Stone's cover featured significant actors, writers, and politicians, such as Jack Nicholson, Susan Sontag, and Bill Clinton. In an effort to enhance its image, the magazine moved its offices to New York City in 1977. In May, 2006, Rolling Stone printed its 1,000th issue. Its success through the decades was due to its ability to adapt to constantly changing musical, political, and cultural climates. Issues of the Rolling Stone typically include music and movie reviews, celebrity stories, and photographs information on new artists, fashion advice, and articles on politics. Rolling Stone has influenced pop culture through its all-time greatest list, such as the 500 greatest albums of all time and the 100 greatest singers of all time. Hunter Thompson's Hell's Angels the strange and terrible saga of the outlaw motorcycle gangs. Hell's Angels began as the article, The Motorcycle Gangs, Losers and Outsiders, written by Thompson for the May 17, 1965 issue of The Nation. In March, 1965, The Nation editor, Carrie McWilliams 
wrote to Thompson and offered to pay the journalist for an article on the subject of motorcycle gangs and the Hells Angels in particular. Thompson took the job and the article, published about a month later, prompted book offers from several publishers interested in the topic. Thompson spent the next year preparing for the new book in close quarters with the Hells Angels, in particular the San Francisco and Oakland chapters of the club and their president, Ralph Sonny Barger. Thompson was up front with the Angel about his role as a journalist, a dangerous move giving their marked distrust of reporters from what the club considered to be bad press. Thompson was introduced to the gang by uh, Bernie Jarvis, a former club member, and then police beat reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle. This introduction came from an angel and reporter allowed Thompson to get close to the gang in a way others had not been able. Thompson's residence in San Francisco. Far from being weary of this outsider, the angels were sincere in their participation, often talking at length into Thompson's tape recorder and viewing early drafts of the article to ensure that he had his facts straight. The gang often visited his apartment in San Francisco, much to the dismay of his wife and neighbors. His relationship with the gang turned sour. He is beaten up after making a comment about one of its members and the relationship with the gang ends. Who are the Hell's Angels? The name was first suggested by an associate of the founder's name, Arvid Olson, who had served in the Hells Angels squadron of the Flying Tigers in China during World War II. It is at least clear that the name was inspired from the tradition from World Wars I and II, whereby the Americans gave their squadrons fierce death-defying titles. An example of this lies in one of the three P-40 squadrons of Flying Tigers fielded in Burma and China, which was dubbed Hell's Angels. Different than the gangs we talked about in New York, returning from war, these missed the camaraderie and excitement of their war experience. Riding a motorcycle was considered exciting and dangerous. These men had jobs and were born in America. The Hells Angels are often depicted in semi-mythical romantic fashion, free-spirited, iconic, bound by brotherhood and loyal loyalty semi-militaristic in its structure. The club became prominent within and established its notoriety as a part of the 1960s subculture movement in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district. Playing a part at many of the movement's seminal events, Members were directly connected to many of the counterculture's primary leaders, such as Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters, Allen Ginsberg, Jerry Garcia, and the Grateful Dead, Timothy Leary, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Tom Wolfe. Writing about the club launched the career of gonzo journalist Hunter S. Thompson. Gaining membership often takes years. In order to become a Hells Angel prospect, candidates must have a valid driver's license, a motorcycle over 750 cc's, and have the right combination of personal qualities. 
It is said the club excludes child molesters and individuals who have applied to become police or prison officers. Outlaw biker clubs formed in the late 1940s on the West Coast after the end of World War II. The culture was first popularized in Marlon Brando's film, The Wild One, 1953, which tells a story based very loosely on actual events. The Hells Angels are known for their bad reputation as a motorcycle club, but they have some surprisingly positive tidbits you may not know about. They hold a toy drive for kids around Christmas time every year. Charity rides are held and donations are given to the need. On several occasions, musicians have hired Hells Angels to serve as concert security. Again in 1961, when the Beatles' George Harrison invited a couple of San Francisco Angels to London, their presence at the concert went well with Harrison and the band, and the Hells Angels would go on to win the respect of several musicians, hiring the Hells Angels as concert security. For at least five years, the Angels have had a Mayflower Thanksgiving Day food drive and chili cook-off to help out the less fortunate in their immediate area during the holidays. They gather non-perishable food items. They raise money for the disabled. Community involvement is key. It is a very complicated cultural phenomenon. Its influence worldwide chapters are from America, Europe, South America, Asia, Russia, Australia, New Zealand, and the Middle East.